Hi guys, so I'm making a small video here and I want to document <clears throat> the episodes uh, pertaining to Parvo. Now, we have this little guy, this little girl, should I say. Um, her name is Princess and unfortunately, Princess is not feeling well. Um, as you can see, this is the third time that we wash her little bedding and this is just brandly new um these are stains from her pooping episodes i know it's not pleasant but whoever has gone through parvo they know that's what it it entails it entails a lot of diarrhea and vomiting um now with that said um she tested positive about four days ago <clears throat> and uh, i've been taking care of her uh it hasn't been very uh fun and if you guys have been through a puppy with parvo you know exactly how unfun the situation is and if you're watching this it's because you are out of options and you don't know what to do um so i'm gonna go ahead and make some space here and move the table all right um so as you all know <clears throat> dogs that have parvo will not eat or drink so that food has been there forever um, she's not stimulated to eat at all. She's very lethargic, um, basically sleeps all day. You can call her, will barely look at you. Hey, baby. Hey, honey. I'm here. I'm here. She basically does not even respond. I mean, um, other than, you know, lifting her leg, letting me know, hey, you can pet me, but I'm just kind of sleeping sleeping it off i'm not feeling well so this is the this is typical of a parvo case um usually by day four is when they get worse um in this case she has uh she has not improved mm -hmm. um every day she deteriorated and i'll post some pictures over here and over there um of what the stools look like on a constant basis um now you want to control that with pepto bismol uh, for children. I will post a little picture here what it looks like. So you want to control that but you don't want to get over doze the puppy because you want to make sure that yes you control the stools but uh, at the same time you don't want her to overdose because uh, it can have side effects on their body. Now with that said the main concern is to keep them hydrated. Now I know a lot of the puppies they will defecate and they will vomit. Now in this case we have been giving her um, IV fluids. Uh, so if she's not eating or drinking on her own, IV fluids are really important. So the one way that you can tell if she's dehydrated is by lifting the lip. Now you see how she's pink? You know that she's doing okay. Um, if you're lifting and you see that she's white, then you know that's close to, uh, you know, not death, but uh, very close to it. Seriously. <laughs> um, so you lift on. And then what you do is you press the gums. All right, so you'll press the gums. And then if the color comes back, see how it comes back pink that way? There you go. It goes from white to pink. You know that her coloring is normal and healthy. Um, you know that she's okay, that's one way. And also to know if she's dehydrated or not, you lift the skin. Now if it goes back right away, you know that she's hydrated. If you lift the skin and it takes a little while, like if it stays like this and it takes a, real, a, a while to unfold, you know that she's totally dehydrated and she needs hydration. Now, um, what I do recommend is that you put in her water, you're gonna put some, can you go close the door? Some electrolyte in the water. Um, so you're gonna put some regular water. The water that we use is bottled water, you guys. Don't use, um sink water even if it's drinkable i always recommend to get some purified water and then you'll add some pedialyte to your water so make sure you that add that you can add a pinch or two of sugar um do not use gatorade um gatorade is too high in sugar and it's got like a lot of stuff in there that, like glyceride and whatnot things that are not good for the puppy so just keep it fresh water pedialyte uh, it could be a colored Pedialyte. I prefer the uh, transparent one. Now, as far as food, she will not eat, so don't give her, as you can see, there's a little bit of rice here. Um, I had put some uh, chicken and rice, which stops the diarrhea, but she is not enticed to eat at all. Uh, now, contrary to what she looks like right now, she looks lifeless. 
I know she's fine. She's just resting. Um, she basically, we took her outside. She barely moved. Um, so, you know, when they're sick, it's just like when you're sick, you like to stay in bed and rest. I know she's okay. Even if you call her. Now, there's one thing you guys need to know. Dogs that don't respond to you calling them, it's not that they're sleeping. So just remember that. Dogs don't sleep, especially puppies. Um, if she's not responding, it's because there's something wrong. Now, in this case, she's treating. We're treating her now. So I know that she's not responding because she's resting. Um, you know, uh, we she's been through a lot this morning. I haven't slept yet. It is an ongoing thing. Uh, basically, their stomach. Um, parvo is a digestive system problem. Uh, their gut is infiltrated with either worms, parasites, and it's trying to adjust. Now, the puppy has to do its own work. That's why if the puppy's really, really young, it's hard for the puppies to get better on their own. And if the puppy's a little older, sometimes it's it's better because their immune system's a little stronger. When, when they're young, she's, Princess is about 10 weeks old. Um, I don't believe that she got any of her shots yet. Um, she was given to us by someone. And um, unfortunately, that person did not take care of her properly. And the minute she arrived here, she was sick. Um, so she's been sick for like, today is day five. Uh, went to the vet for the first time yesterday. She was given an antibiotic shot, which lasts about two weeks. Um, and um, that should help her just if, because she had a little bit of a runny nose. So when your immune system is low, it just develops other issues, uh, health issues, such as like a cold or runny nose. So you don't want them, their immune system to go lower than a certain norm. <clears throat> now there's a way to calculate parvo. They can either take a blood test or they'll take a uh, fecal. They'll take a little Q-tip and test the fecal area with the saliva and I'll put it in a little test tube. You can buy those and I'll just link, actually I'll post a picture. You can do it at home if you don't wanna spend the money at the vet. You can do it at home to see if she's parvo positive <clears throat> and that'll save you guys a lot of money. Um, now her paws are a little dirty. I don't wanna put her through a shower. Just, I know that she's sick and we're just gonna leave her as is. Now this teddy bear has helped a lot cause she cuddles against it. So it's kind of like the presence of a new animal or something that keeps her warm uh the bed like i said we keep washing it but it's her little safety area so even though it's a little dirty right now that's gonna do you just want to keep her safe and relaxed and that's what we're doing so it might look a little disgusting to you guys but right now every time she poops she literally gets out of the bed it poops and steps on it and brings it back here so and she does that maybe five to ten times a day if not more I've been up all night. It's probably eight o'clock right now in the morning and I was up every two hours. So now moving on over to what I give her. I purchased my Bactra Plus. Okay, it's organic and it's a combination to enhance the immune system through natural antibiotics. Um, and it helps with microscopic parasitical activity. So again, parasites, um, usually you hookworms, um, all kinds of Parasites, including all the worms that are listed, which I'll probably list here, are active in her, um, in her gut. And now uh, the fact that they're in there and she hasn't been dewormed uh, is probably causing a lot of her uh, discomfort. So I have used, um, oh, and I forgot to tell you guys that not only did I put pity light, but there's also, let me get it for you. I also put... Uh, Let's see here. Okay. So I'm also using, which I'm gonna put here, this here. I put some Culture Kids Probiotic. All right, it's dairy and gluten-free. I took one of these packet, opened it, and mixed it in the water, okay? So once I put the powder in there, I just mix it. And uh, what that helps, it helps the gut to restore the uh, floor, intestinal floor and everything that's going on in there. Um, I'm lucky that she's kind of holding things down. A lot of parvo puppies throw up. Um, so basically, if they're throwing up, like I said, and they're defecating, you have an issue because the puppy obviously is not eating and everything that you force through the mouth comes out on both ends. So uh, they get very dehydrated. And so uh, this helps a lot, you guys. So when you are injecting water through their mouth, since they're not lifting, you know, standing, to go drink, um, this will dissolve in the water, and then as you give it to her, it'll help. Uh, going back to the, the Bactra Plus, 
Um, I will show you, because she is, this is an old bottle, so it's probably a little dirty here, but, um, so basically under three pounds, she is five. So we're gonna go here, three to 10 pounds, five drops, all right? So we're gonna do five drops, um, and it's the first, uh, the first time she got it, it's in the middle of the night. I'm sorry, guys, this is the Nutri-Cal that's here. <clears throat> do not exceed the daily recommended dose, which is really important. Um, you know, this is natural, so it's pretty strong. Uh, if you look at the ingredients here, let's see here. And this are four times daily during waking hours. You'd have to do it in the morning, and I did it early this morning, for up to 10 days. I've seen dogs, like, literally going from this lifeless to like feeling much better once they start even getting their first dosage so you got olive leaf mustard seed black seed cloves doldarko jotaba um jatoba grapefruit seeds and it's got a little bit of alcohol which a lot of people are not okay with i am not but uh it is distilled with water uh, the alcohol um volume is 17 percent uh, whoops, using organic herbs. So it is, I mean, it, it is scary when you first see it. It is mixed. It's mild. It's not a huge concentration and it helps uh, mixing everything together. Now, our, we're doing a dosage of every six hours. So it's not something you're giving her every minute. Um, so, and it helps a lot, you guys. Um, it helps against infection. And the infection, as I said, because her, her body is so weak um that if she were to catch a cold she'd catch it right away because her immune system is so low um and then it helps for bacteria, parasites and um it's almost acts like a antibiotic and an antioxidant so i believe in natural products so we're gonna go ahead and give her some because she is due is it nine o'clock you guys not yet it's almost nine okay so again i always like to double check dosage so we want to give her about five drops. I won't just because um, I like to play it safe and not overdose them. So and I'll show you guys what it looks like. So we're just gonna take this. You guys can get this on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> sometimes they have the fast shipping, sometimes they don't. So if you guys have a puppy and you're watching this because it may happen to you, don't wait till the puppy's sick because sometimes the, the delivery takes a long time. A special combination of herbs demonstrated to enhance um, immunity through natural antibiotic antioxidant and microscopic parasites. So again, parasites um, are very pro predominant in their gut. So, all right, so we're gonna go with a couple of, so if you don't mind just holding this for me and just keep filming. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna wake her up now. Hey baby, I know you don't like me right now. There you go, okay. So what we're gonna do is we shook the product. I'm gonna shake it one more time to show you guys. Okay, so we're gonna go like this. And you wanna make sure you count the dosage, okay? So you're gonna lift her mouth. And you, you guys are gonna squeeze lightly on each side, okay? So you're gonna squeeze and you're gonna go count carefully. One, good. Good. Now I'm gonna do one more and that's it. I know it's not the dosage requested. All right, and three. Okay, we're gonna go mild. I wanna go easy. Um, again, she's not keeping much down. Okay, so we're gonna close this. Um, now I started the, her treatment with um, Orvobactra. I started it last night and uh, it was three o'clock. So I was waiting for nine o'clock this morning. And um, um, they may want to see her before or him before they give you this to bring home. Um, so it is a saline bag, just like the ones you have at the hospital for sick patient. Uh, you can hang it on a hanger and just put it there. As long as it's elevated and higher than the puppy, um, you will get different syringes like that. Um, and then you can do up to three times. I've just changed mine. You can use up to three times your needle. All right, you guys. So uh, basically you, uh, this is locked right now. You unlock it by rolling the wheel. So the, the saline is gonna start moving. But before you do that, obviously you take off the cap, which I won't do. And uh, you're gonna grab the puppy right here and you're gonna pinch it. So you'll see how it creates a little tent 
when you pinch it up like that. And that's where you're gonna put the needle right in there and that's gonna hurt the little baby. So you just wanna massage maybe, pinch it and massage it this way before you do it. And then you kind of go in and inject in there. Um, let the water run. You wanna give it a good 100 cc. Um, so this is a thousand cc, as you can see. So you wanna give it a hundred. So this is a thousand. Every line that's there, like from one to two, that's a hundred. Um, and you and so on and so forth so obviously if you do one to two and then two and a half then you're giving it 150 cc um this puppy is tiny it's really hard for me to give her anything above 50 cc because um the bump starts getting really swollen here and you'll see it like this big again this is sub q which means it's under the skin um so you're not giving it intravenous you're not in the vein so it shouldn't bleed if it's bleeding that means you went a little too deep okay now once you're done You'll pinch it and then you'll remove it and just kind of pinch the area for a little bit um, because the water is going to want to come out from the entrance of the needle now you want to do that twice a day morning and night or as needed in this case um she's she was very high, uh, dehydrated um before i went to the vet so once they did it i did it twice since then um and i try to do it as much as she can because she's not really moving much or getting her own water, although she did try to get up to drink it, uh, but then it didn't sit well with her. So with that said, um, let's move on to baby food. All right, so I did give her a variety. I had to get her chicken and chicken broth. Um, I also got turkey and turkey broth. This is regular baby food, it's very cheap. It's about a dollar each or 10 for $10. Uh, turkey and gravy. I want to kind of gravitate around the chicken, which is what I have in the fridge. So I will show you that. Uh, now guys, when you handle your puppy, make sure you have gloves. Really important. Um, parasites are contagious. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, spread that around the house. And you want to keep on cleaning and make sure that your pads are clean. And I kid you not, I had a hundred pad in my pack. And I'm already on like number 80 or something, barely for the last three days. So I keep on changing it. Um, I leave this in the fridge. All right, and I have a little syringe with it. Let me get this in there for you. Okay, so you basically open this, which is already open. That's why it was in the fridge. This is the chicken and gravy. And then you get your syringe. And then what you'll do is you'll just um, obviously close that. So you just kind of suction this out and give her one syringe every two hours. And you'll just make sure like I try to open her mouth earlier, just kind of put pressure on each side of the jaw, make her open her mouth and slowly and slowly go in there. And that's it. You want to do that every two hours. Um, that's if she can keep food down. If she can't try it anyways, it'll probably come out as diarrhea or vomiting. Um, but as long as you're giving her something, uh, usually when they have parvo, you want to wait 24 to 48 hours without no food as long as she's getting IV. If she's not getting IV and you guys can't afford it or your vet doesn't have it or whatever the situation is, you need to give her something. She needs to stay hydrated. So water, Pedialyte um, can help, but always food. And if food does not stay down, you want to go with, look guys, gloves. Remember I was telling you guys, gloves are really important. Uh, you want to go with NutriCal. Okay, NutriCal is so important. Look at all the vitamins in it. You have um, vitamins, minerals, omega three, six, and nine. Um, it's very high calorie. It's for people for puppies that don't eat at all. Uh, it's got high fat. It's it's really helpful. You can go, honey. It's very helpful for all puppies that don't want to eat. Um, now, what does it look like? It's a pasty-like substance. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I got it. It's a pasty light substance like this. And I'm gonna try to squeeze it out. There you go. Um, now, it smells kind of foul a little bit. It's, it's a combination of like pasty, smelly. It's not great. It's a little oily too, because sometimes when you put the tube, you'll feel like the oil coming out. Um, the way that I administer it, the best way is I will put the syringe in the hole. And then as I push the tube, um, as it's coming out, I will, and I'll, I'll show you. Here, I'll have, come here. I'll, um, okay, 
So this is how I do it, you guys. I take it, I mean, there's two choices. You can either put it on the tip of your tongue, I mean, your tongue, the tip of your fingers, and then you kind of like open her mouth. And then you kind of, when you open her, your mouth, you just put it on her palate. Um, I don't like to put my finger in her mouth at this point because um, she's not feeling well. The last thing you want is a finger down your throat. So what I do is I just push and then I suction with the needle. Let's see here if I can do it. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah, it's a little jammed. Okay. And you guys want to clean this syringe a lot because see how it's going in now? If you don't do that, it gets the paste gets really sweet. I mean, the paste is made of sugar. Okay, so there you have it. All right, so we have some here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And then what you wanna do, you see it? Okay, so come closer. I'm gonna wake her up slowly. Again, I'm gonna put the pressure. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the side of her mouth. And I'm just gonna give her a little bit. There you go, I'm gonna let her taste that. She may wanna go drink water. And see how she's kind of wobbly and she's not really feeling well. Um, at least that's stimulated to go drink water on their own, which is wonderful. Not even, she's kind of smelling it and not even wanting it, um, which is fine. She's just not having it. I'm gonna keep the syringe for maybe a little bit later. I don't think she's enjoying, but you guys, See, just any movement, even if it's just, if it is just like uh, scratching her bed or moving more than usual, that's like a sign. That's a good sign. Um, even though she is lifeless and not um, very lethargic, you always want to stimulate her, even if it means going outside from fresh air, um, you know, getting exercise. It's like a patient that's in the hospital laying down. Um, they always encourage to push the patient to move. Um, I always encourage it. She goes outside. She walks a little bit and then gets tired and we bring her back in just for some fresher and for some um, change of scenario and scenery. Uh, a lot of patience, a lot of love. Um, here you go, baby. Do you want some more? No? I usually try not to force them. This time around, I won't give her more because I did give it to her not too long ago. Um, see, I put some on her nose. She might just lick it or maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so they're going to get very sticky and messy. Um, you can always take a, a warm towel with hot water and just kind of clean their mouth. Uh, now I'm probably going to just throw this in the wash now. We're going to do another wash. Hi, baby. I usually wash it twice. I'm just to make sure. Um, but she's looking much better. As you can see, she walked on her own, even though she didn't like the Nutri-Cal. But the Nutri-Cal, you guys, is high calorie keeps her stomach full from not wanting to eat. And I mean, I've seen puppies on NutriCal for, for a month. Uh, they don't come cheap. Sometimes they're about $10. I've seen them on Amazon three for 18, uh, or was it two for 18? But I'll, I'll click the link and I'll post a little picture right here so you guys can see it. Um, I'm sure you can get a good deal. It's called NutriCal or a high calorie nutritional gel. Here it's NutriCal. Anything that sounds like that, is good for your puppy. Uh, you wanna make sure it's puppy, not adult, because puppies need more nutrients and this one is concentrated with a lot of vitamins and stuff. So I hope this helped you guys. I'm gonna post everything that I do here. Um, um, now you may wonder, where do I get the syringe? Where do I get that? So this I got on Amazon. This you can get on any pet store or Amazon. This I got at the pharmacy. Um, this I got at my local food store, um, um, the syringe. You can get a syringe if you've had your puppy to administer any kind of medicine. It comes with syringe. You can get syringe, I believe, at the pharmacy. I'm not sure. Um, but any kind of syringe doesn't matter. And I know a lot of like medicine nowadays, even Tylenol sometimes for, bi for babies, it comes with a syringe um, to administer babies. So you can use that as well. Um, now, as far as the Pepto-Bismol, not Pepto-Bismol, because that's for your stomach, but um, I'm trying to think of Emodium. There you go. Emodium is really good for uh, stopping the um, diarrhea, but you don't want to overdose, so you just want to give her one or two doses morning and night. Uh, other than that, lots of love. Uh, let them know you're there for them. Um, now, they have to fight this on their own. There's so much you can do um, if you're dedicated and you don't have the finances. A lot of at-home care can actually save you a lot of money. 
but it's a lot of work, you guys. Like I said, I haven't slept yet because I'm determined to make this little girl feel better. Um, another thing is make sure you get some samples, feces. Uh, bring it to your vet. Maybe she has Georgia, Coccidia, which are the two very common, um, you know, fecal uh, worms that are very common that will cause this kind of condition. Uh, and if they do, they'll give you the proper medicine, which may look like this. Uh, Albon is one of the treatment. Okay, oral suspension Albon, which is kind of a liquid. Um, and if his, that's what she has or he has, then you have to treat them with that as well. So with that said, I hope this was helpful. I know there's not a lot of videos out there where they actually show the puppy that has parvo. Um, again, this is not one of our puppy. Uh, when you have parvo though, make sure you disinfect everything because whatever, if you touch your puppy and then you have a brand new puppy, chances are the puppy will get it, the other one. Um, it's very, very contagious. Um, and you wanna get, and I'll show a picture right here. You wanna get something that will kill parvo and not just anything. Just bleach will not kill parvo. Um, so if you do have uh, thoughts of getting a new puppy, don't do it while this puppy is sick. Even when the puppy gets better, uh, they do go in the yard and they defecate in the yard and that will stay for two to three years in the backyard. So any new puppy that smells that can get sick. So parvo is no joke, you guys. It takes three years for the actual bacteria, if it's on the floor, to leave. Um, so anything under your feet, your footsies can pick up, especially your shoes, can pick up, pick up parvo outside and you can actually bring it in. Um, and then the puppy can be a brand new puppy coming to your home. The minute it walks around, it smells the parvo, it can catch it. And then you guys are stuck with this number one puppy killer disease. Um, and again, your puppy may survive, may not survive. It really is up to the puppy. You can try all of this and it won't work or you can try this and it will work. Recommendation is keep at it. Um, like I said, I was up literally all night. Uh, and she made it through the most difficult because usually day four of Parvo, that's when they go down. She's looking a little bit better. Just the fact that she's walking over tells me that she's doing better. Yesterday, she was totally motionless. So it's telling me that she's doing pretty good. Um, she's on her way to recovery, hopefully. Um, again, the IV's helping. Everything that I'm doing is helping. Can't hurt. Um, and so let's just pray for her. I uh, make sure Princess gets better. And when she does, I'll let you guys know. All right. So hopefully um, this was informative. Um, and if I could just save one puppy at a time, and so be it. I know you guys probably are doing your research online. Um, and if this was helpful, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And um, I hope that I can be of help in the future. All right, guys, post your comment. Let me know your story. Let me know if any of what I've mentioned helped your puppy. And uh, I wish you all good luck. And say goodbye to Princess. Bye, Princess.